Hi there. Now for the last part of this question, we're asked to find the time between the instant when the ball is projected from A and the instant when the ball reaches the ground. So in other words, the time taken for the ball to go from here up to its highest height and then to hit the ground. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment just to pause the video. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So for part C then, what I'm going to do is consider the motion from A to C in one go by considering a SUVAT based equation. So we just put A to C there, okay? So let's put down our variables S, U, V, A and T, okay? Now because the initial projection from A was upwards, I'm going to take upwards as positive. It's always a good idea to do it that way. And so S is the displacement. So when it goes from here up to B, its displacement is H. It comes back down to A, it's zero. And then we carry on down to C and that displacement now is negative 1.5. So displacement s is minus 1.5. u, the initial velocity is positive 21. v, well v we found out in part b, it was 21.688 or the square root of 470.4 but it acts in the negative sense okay so I'm going to take that as minus the root of 470 0.4 just to keep it on the accurate side there okay the acceleration a well that's downwards it's 9.8 meters per second per second but as it's acting downwards it's going to be negative 9.8 t well that's what we're trying to find now because we know all of these other variables other than t there's plenty of equations that we can use. I'll list them. We could use, for instance, V equals U plus AT. We could use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Or S equals VT minus a half AT squared. Or lastly, S equals U plus V all multiplied by t divided by 2. So it's up to you which one of those you would pick. I certainly wouldn't fancy going for these two because they've got t squared in them. So it's going to involve a quadratic in t which might need to be factorized or using the formula, the quadratic formula. So I'm going to stick to this one here. I would say experiment, try that one as well you should obviously end up with exactly the same answer as I get. Okay, well let's just border that off and see where this takes us. So I'm just going to say using V equals U plus AT. And if we do that, let's rearrange this for T. So if I take U from both sides, AT would equal V minus U. And then if I divide both sides by A, T would equal V minus U all divided by A. So what we've got for T then is V which is minus root 470.4 so minus the root of 470.4 and then we've got minus U U is 21 so we've got minus 21 there and this is all divided by A which is minus 9.8 so we end up with a positive answer for t, which is what we would expect, and that turns out to be 4.355 and so on. So if we round this, say, to one decimal place, it's going to be 4.4 seconds then to one dp, one decimal place. Okay, so I hope it's given you some idea then how to tackle that particular problem.